AMD have spoilt us. Every year, I can be sure that they'll have a graphics card ready to rival Nvidia's latest. This has kept prices low and progress swift, year after year, but things have been a little different for the last few generations. This year has seen the launch of the 500 and Vega series. On paper, this looks great. New low, mid and high end products. Full house! What more could we ask for? But the 500 series is little more than an overclocked 400. I don't understand AMD's obsession with performance at any cost. The Polaris architecture has the potential to be beautifully efficient, but they insist on overclocking it to within an inch of its life. Well, I know why. They're trying to close the gap in performance between Polaris and Nvidia's 1050 and 1060 series. You could argue that benchmarks are all that matter and that it's imperative that they match Nvidia's if they want buyers to consider the 500 series. But I disagree. If what everybody says about mindshare is true, you know, where people favour Nvidia just for its brand, then clearly performance isn't the only thing that matters. In fact, it would be better for them to distance themselves from direct comparisons with Nvidia by selling their products at a different price. Embrace Polaris's power efficiency, accept the cards run best when slightly slower, and lower the price to give people like myself a good reason to recommend them to buyers. The blame here doesn't lie solely with AMD, but also with third-party retailers who try to extract as much value out of each product as they can. They seem to think that owners of a Radeon 560 want a dual-fan, foot-long card that requires extra power connectors for the extra 10% performance it brings about. No, no they don't. Stop it. Leave it as the low-powered gaming card that it was intended to be. And then there's Vega. Just before its launch, I made a video detailing all of the information we knew about it. I'm really proud of this video since it shows a unique perspective that I don't think anybody else has done. The video will only get more valuable with time as the internet gets flooded with post-launch stories and information. Check it out if you want a refresher on the story leading up to its launch, as it is one of the more interesting tales. Now that it's been out for a while, I think it's safe to say that Vega was… underwhelming disappointing. It deserves this award. I wouldn't say it's a failure, just a case of too little, too late. Its performance was below what was expected of a GPU of its size and, sadly, its power efficiency wasn't competitive with Nvidia's products either. For the right price, it would be good, but they didn't even get that right, despite the promising bundle deals that they shouted about before launch. There was talk of some exciting features that may be activated in a future driver release or whatever, but I think AMD's silence on the matter says all that needs to be said. You know what Vega and Polaris have in common? They're both 18 months late. Think about it. Had Polaris come out at the start of 2015 instead, it would have been pitted against the GeForce 970, a card with almost the exact same performance and power consumption. It would have been an excellent alternative and directly comparable in almost every way. And no, don't tell me that it's comparable to the 980 because even the 580, with double the RAM, years of driver optimizations, and aggressive overclocking, performs behind it in pretty much every benchmark. And Vega, 18 months earlier, would have been released a few months before the GeForce 1070 and 80. Its power consumption could be excused had it been first to the market, and I think it would have been remembered as a worthy competitor rather than something that got our hopes up and then broke our hearts. But of course, the reality is that these two architectures didn't release 18 months earlier. Nvidia undoubtedly has the advantage and has done for some time. They offer better performance despite their cards having smaller and more efficient die sizes. And beyond the GeForce 1080, Nvidia remains uncontested and can charge what they like for the privilege, as can now be seen with the new $3000 Volta card. All the while, poor AMD has to make do with fierce competition and insulting new gaming rivals like the 1070 Ti and 5GB 1060. Like, why Nvidia? Why? But this is what happens when one company gets the upper hand. Whatever the reason is for Nvidia delaying mainstream Volta cards, whether it's that they aren't ready to be launched, although they simply want to milk profits from Pascal first. AMD should see it as a blessing. Vega and Polaris struggle enough against Pascal. Imagine how they'd fare against Volta. Poor Vega. AMD will want Volta to come out as late as it can, and for its prices to remain as high and as unobtainable as possible. I don't see AMD rivaling Nvidia anytime soon, short of a miracle. The current Gen 1080 Ti has no rival, let alone Volta, terrifyingly looming just around the next corner. This lack of competition sees prices creeping up, and with it some scary trends start happening. When people consider a GeForce 1080 mid-range, then you know that there's something wrong. I firmly stick to the belief that the 580 and 1060 are mid-range, the 1080 and Vega as high-end, and the 1080 Ti and beyond as a super premium luxury. But while it's been a bit depressing for us consumers, AMD's probably quite happy right now, thanks to cryptocurrency. 
is a bit of a dirty word since miners have continually bought up GPU stocks, which have pushed up prices for the rest of us. But AMD must be loving this. Their cards perform very well at this task and sell well beyond the original $200 asking price as a result. Once again, I've seen AMD fanboys somehow trying to explain how this is bad for AMD. Something to do with reduced market share or retailers gobbling up the profits or how it results in burned out second hand cards that hurt AMD's reputation and increase Nvidia's mind share. But once again, I think that's rubbish. As far as I'm concerned, if they can shift whatever they can produce and at prices well beyond the original asking price, then AMD are laughing right now. So what if their cards are being used for mining? With the money they make from these sales, they could easily pump it back into their GPU division if they wanted to. See it as an investment into Navi. Even if their gaming market share goes down as a result. So what? They're selling out at inflated prices. They even had that huge Vega deal with Apple recently. I suspect that 2017 has left AMD in a much stronger position than they were at the start of it. And if they aren't, then they're doing something horribly, horribly wrong. I like to end on a positive. I have personally never had a problem with AMD's drivers or software. But even still, it's clear that they've come on in leaps and bounds. Most recently with their new Adrenaline software. What an excellent move from AMD. It's something that will make AMD products all the more appealing to own. And I have friends who own Vega, who are very happy with the card who find enjoyment in tinkering with it, undervolting and overclocking to make it so much better than it initially was upon release. And while I consider them rivals to Nvidia's 1070 and 1080, there are some games where they punch well beyond their weight. Most notably, the likes of Doom and Wolfenstein, where they contest even the almighty 1080 Ti. Much like Fine Wine, it's better to see these as welcome bonuses when they do happen, rather than to be disappointed if they don't. And please AMD, use Vega to make mobile gaming great again. There's so much potential to pair Vega up with Ryzen and to have affordable AMD gaming rigs for everybody, which I hope to see a lot more of in 2018. This year has seen AMD's CPU and GPU divisions trade places. I'd rather they both did well, but if I had to choose, I think what's happened has been for the best for AMD, and I can't wait to see what they have in store for us next year.